Hello everyone, I'm Semfi, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make maps for Krunker. Alright, so before the tutorial starts, I'd like to give credit to the only other Krunker editor tutorial out there, and that is the one by Hoax. Hoax made a two-part tutorial in which he helpfully explained most of what the editor can do, but it's been a little while since he made those tutorials and they've since become a little outdated. I started making maps by watching Hoax's tutorials and have since gained some more experience with the editor. I made a map called Stream, a card will be in the top right, and I would say it turned out pretty well. So without further ado, here's my tutorial for the Krunker editor. First up, I'll show you around the menu. Let's start with map config up here in the top right. Under map config, you can set the name, the mod, the ambient light, and a couple other colors, the fog distance, shadows, and death height. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Death height just means how far you can fall off before you get automatically killed. We'll cover terrain and sky in part two of this tutorial. And now let's move on to create object. Under create object, you'll find models, tools, and basics. These are the three kinds of objects you can create. Basics has your trusty ladder, cube, and ramp, and it also has plane, billboard, and water. We'll get into these later. Tools has some more technical things like spawn points, flags, and objectives. Models has some prefab details that you can add into your world with just the click of a button. Now let's move on to object config. Nothing will appear under object config until you actually create an object. So I'll get into object config when we actually have an object. Now that we've covered the right hand menu, let's move on to the bottom menu. The first three buttons, translate, rotate, and scale, manipulate the selected object in one of three ways. Translate will move the object on the X, Y, or Z axis. Rotate will rotate the object in the X, Y, or Z axis. Scale will grow or shrink your object in the X, Y, or Z axis. These three tools can be switched to very easily by pressing one, two, or three on your keyboard. All pretty simple stuff. I'll just skip over world and local for now, as you should never really need to use these. Delete object and duplicate object are pretty self-explanatory, and we'll get into import and export map in part two. New map is pretty obvious. It resets your entire map. Test map opens a private game for you to test your map in, and host map opens a public game for you to test your map in. Help will open a little menu with all the keyboard shortcuts. If ever you forget a shortcut, it's very easy to go look up the help menu. Take a minute to look over all of these shortcuts just to familiarize yourself and understand the editor much easier. I'll skip the advanced tab for now and I'll go over that in part two. Okay, now that we know what the menus do, we can start to make a map. First thing you'll notice is the grid. The grid can be modified in advanced, settings, grid, and I'll just set mine to a thousand for now. Looks good nice and big. Now that I have a sense of space, let's start moving around. To move around, use W, A, S, and D in the conventional way, but you use Q and E to go up and down, or you can also use Z and X to go up and down, and you hold down right click to look around. If you hold down shift while pressing W, A, S, or D, then that will make you go faster in your specified direction. Take a few minutes to get a feel for the controls and remember that the help menu is always here in case you forget them. Now we can start actually making our map. But before we start placing objects, I want to warn you about planes and rotating objects. Under create object and basics, you'll find the plane. Now you would think that you would want to use the plane for your ground in your world, but Generally, planes are a little glitchy, as in the texture just stretches as you make it bigger, so you end up with these huge blocks if you have a large floor. The better alternative is to just delete that and use a actual cube, make it all the way thin, and just make that big, because the blocks here will actually duplicate and the floor will look way better. Now I'll warn you about rotating. When you rotate an object in the Krunker Editor, 
It looks as if the object would rotate normally, but only the visual model moves. The hitbox doesn't actually move. Here is an example of this. In general, you should just stick with straight walls and don't use rotated anything. The only time you'll use rotate is when working with non-collidable things like roofs that you can't stand on or some other trees or waterfalls or something. Okay, now let's start placing in some objects. I'll start with a cube as a floor and scale it all the way flat and make it much bigger. Now is a good time to cover the object config tab, under which you can find checkboxes, sliders, and drop downs for all your different settings. You can change whether the object is visible, collidable, penetrable, or its color, what light color it emits, and its opacity. You can also change its position with number values its rotation, which again, stay away from, and size. Underneath the texture dropdown, you can find a list of different textures to use on your objects. I'll go with dirt for my floor. Now I'll click duplicate object or use shift R and move this up and scale it into a wall. I'll make it a bit thicker, move it down. And now is a good time to warn about overlapping textures. When you have two textures that would overlap, like right here, the game freaks out and it doesn't know which texture to display. In general, you want to stay away from this as it causes ugly flickering and can ruin a whole map. I'll change the texture of this back to wall. And there we are, now we have a wall. Let's add a second wall over here. Duplicate object. Make it thinner. Move it over. And boom, now we have a second wall. Now we have a bit of an environment we can start to place things in. You can choose to have walls or not. Um, I'm just going to go with two for now. And I'll start to make a little bit of a map. Ramps are a little glitchy in that when you run into the bottom or side of a ramp, you will actually get teleported to the top. So keep that in mind when using ramps. Ladders and ramps need to be rotated in the object config here until the purple line is facing the direction you want to climb. Right now, the purple line is facing toward the wall, but you want it facing away so that would be two in this case. Make sure the green hitbox of the ladders goes all the way to the top of your wall, otherwise you won't be able to make it over. You also want to make sure that your ladder hitboxes aren't all the way thin. You want them to be kind of thick and overlap into the wall. It's the same deal with ramps, you can rotate them right here. Now that you have a bit of a map going, it's time to start testing it. You'll need at least one spawn point to test your map, and then just hit the test button. Now it's time to see if things are as big or as small as you thought they were, and if ladders and ramps are working properly. Looks good. Now let's jump back to the editor and continue working on our map. Try to work out a layout before you start adding too many details as it will make the whole experience easier. Once you have a layout picked out, mine's a bit small and you'll want to make yours bigger, but it'll work for an example. You can start adding details. The easiest details to add are models. 
Remember not to rotate objects if you're going to make them collidable. If you must rotate an object, make a new hitbox out of invisible cubes. I'll add a couple of details here like crates. With cars, if you press shift F, it will fix the hitboxes. That way they're not one huge ugly square. And even a red container, which is the container with two R's. The red container is also one big square. It looks like you can go inside, but it's totally solid. You'll need to press shift F again to fix the hitboxes. The window model can be a bit annoying as it has this white square that's hard to hide. I'm rotating it here, but I'm going to turn the collidability off because I don't want the hitbox to be broken. If you show the glass of the windows, there's a white box around the outside. However, if you indent it in so that the white box is hidden, the glass is also hidden. I would generally stay away from windows. You need to press shift F to fix the hitboxes of the red container, the vehicle, and the tree, but most of the other ones should be fine. The grass also has a white square underneath it, which means you have to indent it into the ground, and it only shows up from one angle. This can make grass fairly annoying to work with. If you're planning on using grass, I would recommend making a cube, making it super small and short, choosing the default texture, and choosing a nice green. Then you can add little grass tufts as small cubes. Just make sure they're not collidable. It really helps if you vary the height of your grass tufts. Okay, that's pretty much it for part one. I hope you guys enjoyed and make sure to like this video if you found it useful. Click here for part two and don't forget to subscribe.